when three boys, just past their early teens, got lost in the woods of South Carolina. They stumbled upon an old, dilapidated church. Inside, some people were singing strange, ancient songs. What they found wasn't help, but an eerie congregation who began to chase them with threatening stares, turning their search for aid into a harrowing escape from the unknown. During their school years, Samuel, along with his two inseparable friends, Jason and Brian, forged a friendship that weathered all storms, bound by countless shared memories and unspoken understandings. Their bond was the kind that endured the tests of time after graduation. Life's currents swept Jason away to Lexington, South Carolina, where his father's new job promised a fresh start. Despite the miles that lay between them, the strength of their friendship remained unbroken. One fateful weekend, Brian and Samuel received an irresistible invitation, a chance to visit Jason in his new home. The air was thick with excitement as they anticipated the reunion, eager to share stories and create new memories. Upon their arrival in Lexington, the lure of adventure quickly overcame them. Driven by boredom and innate curiosity, the trio ventured into the nearby forest and countryside. The natural beauty of the area was undeniable. The lush greenery, the soothing sound of rustling leaves, and a scenic river flowing like a silver ribbon through the landscape. The realization of being lost struck them like a cold wave. Samuel's heart raced as he scanned the surroundings. No path, no sign of civilization. Only the endless embrace of the woods. Guys, where are we? Samuel's voice broke the eerie silence. Their phones, devoid of signals, were as good as stones in their pockets. The day aged, and the shadows grew longer. In this bewildering state, they stumbled upon something wholly unexpected and unnerving. An old, dilapidated church standing alone amidst the woods. Its architecture was a relic of forgotten times. Its broken windows gaping like open wounds, compelled by curiosity and desperation. They approached the church. A somber sound of gospel music and singing emanated from within forming an eerie backdrop to their predicament. Inside, they found a congregation seemingly misplaced in time, their attire and demeanor echoing a bygone era. Samuel, with a polite smile, stepped forward. Excuse us, we're lost. Could we use your phone? His words hung in the air, unanswered. The music stopped abruptly, and every head turned, their eyes empty stares piercing. The air turned cold, the silence unbearable. Jason tugged at Samuel's sleeve. Let's go, he whispered, his voice trembling with fear. They retreated, the congregation's eyes following their every step, a silent warning hanging in the air. Once outside, Brian's observation sent a new wave of dread through Samuel. Did you notice? No Christian symbols in there. The church, with its odd congregation and lack of sacred symbols, was an enigma wrapped in fear. They quickened their pace, but a glance back revealed a group of men from the church silently following. Their steps were deliberate, their intentions unclear but ominous. Panic surged through Samuel, his instincts screaming danger. Run! he shouted and the trio sprinted, their breaths ragged, hearts pounding in their chests. The relentless pursuit of the churchgoers echoed in their ears. In a desperate bid for escape, they reached the river without hesitation. They plunged into the icy embrace of the water. The current was strong, but fear lent them strength. The icy waters of the river, though bone-chilling, felt like a protective barrier against the menacing figures looming on the bank. 
Samuel, Brian, and Jason, drenched and shivering, clambered onto the opposite shore, their hearts pounding like drumbeats in a silent forest. Catching their breath, they dared to glance back. The churchgoers stood firm, their eyes fixed on the trio with menacing glares. Their stares were haunting, filled with a terrifying resolve as they clenched their jaws, teeth grinding in a silent but palpable threat. Yet, they made no move to follow across the water, as if bound by an unseen force. Let's keep moving, Samuel urged, his voice a mix of fear and determination. They trudged through the underbrush, the cold of the river still clinging to their skin. The forest seemed to watch them, its silence now a foreboding presence. After what felt like hours, the dense trees gave way to a clearing, where an old gas station sat, a relic from a forgotten era. Its rusted pumps and faded sign were like beacons of hope to the weary travelers. The dingy windows were smeared with grime, casting shadows on the dimly lit interior. Tentatively, they entered. The attendant, a man with overly tanned skin and an oily baseball cap, looked up from his tattered book. His eyes, hidden under the cap's brim, scrutinized them, a half-smile playing on his lips, revealing a mouthful of rotten teeth. We need to get to the highway, Samuel explained. Avoiding details of their ordeal, the man's gaze lingered on them, unsettling and calculating. Follow the road, take a right at the telephone pole, can't miss it, he said in a gravelly voice, his smile never reaching his eyes. Thanking him, they left the station, but not before noticing the man stepping outside, watching them leave with that same rotten-toothed grin. A shiver ran down Samuel's spine. Was this man another link in the chain of their nightmare? The road was deserted, lined with overgrown bushes and the occasional rusted car. The twilight sky cast a gloomy light, turning their surroundings into a landscape from a ghost story. Every rustle in the bushes, every whisper of the wind, made them jump. Their nerves stretched thin. Finally, they reached the telephone pole, a lone sentinel on their path to safety. Turning right as instructed, they found themselves on a broader path, the promise of the highway close at hand. The twilight highway stretched before Samuel, Jason, and Brian like a ribbon of fading hope. Each passing car that ignored their frantic waves added to their sense of despair. The sky, painted in hues of deep purple and orange, bore witness to their vulnerability in the growing darkness. Their attempts to flag down passing cars were futile, the few that passed by seemingly blind to their desperate gestures. The isolation of the road, coupled with the failing light, deepened their sense of dread. Exhaustion clawed at their bodies, and fear gnawed at their minds. The eerie encounters of the day haunted them. Each noise from the surrounding woods, a reminder of the terror they had fled, they walked, each step heavy with the weight of their ordeal. Then, as if in answer to their silent pleas, the flashing lights of a police cruiser pierced the twilight. Relief washed over them, like a warm tide as the officer pulled over. His face, marked with lines of experience, regarded them with a mix of curiosity and concern. We're lost, Samuel explained his voice shaky. We need to get back to our friend's place in Lexington. The officer nodded, his expression turning from curiosity to surprise when they mentioned their starting point. You really are lost, he said, a tinge of disbelief in his voice. The ride back to Jason's house was a blur of relief and exhaustion. The officer listened intently to their abridged story his eyes often meeting Samuel's in the rearview mirror when they mentioned the church and the pursuit. 
His expression darkened. You boys are lucky to be alive, the officer said gravely. There's talk of crazy witch folks in those woods, people who don't take kindly to strangers. His words sent a chill down Samuel's spine, confirming their fears. As they arrived at Jason's home, the inviting light from the house seemed like a haven. The final advice of the officer, cautioning them to steer clear of the forest, resonated in their thoughts while they expressed their gratitude to him. Inside, the familiarity of Jason's home was a stark contrast to the day's horrors. They recounted their tale, the fear and disbelief clear in their voices. Jason's parents listened, their faces etched with concern and relief. That night, as Samuel lay in bed, the events replayed in his mind, the haunting stares from the church, the relentless pursuit, the officer's ominous words, all lingered like shadows in his thoughts. Sleep was elusive, the fear a constant companion. The experience in the Lexington woods had changed them. They had escaped, but the memory of that day would remain a chilling reminder of the unseen terrors that lurk in forgotten.